Let us stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. I'm going to go ahead and read it from the screen. I believe that's a New American Standard Version. And Doc, once we read it, you can leave it right there. Does that work for me? Amen. Let's all read together. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. For this reason I also suffer these things. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. You may be seated. How... Do we go forward? After 16 years, David, after 20 years from me, we're always wondering how do we, through the grace of God, move God's people? How do we move ourselves? How do we take ministry to another level? That is the burden that is upon every leader's heart for you, the congregation. How do we get us, the church, to get to a higher level of serving God, of, of realizing that God has called us to a work for worship and to win souls? And so as I, I looked at the text, I, I, I saw a man named Paul who was at the latter stages of his life. As a matter of fact, he was in prison. He was locked up. But his mind wasn't locked up. He, he, he was still being used by God. So one of the things that Paul wanted to make sure that Timothy understood, that no matter what the circumstances in life was, that you've got to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it gets. How many know it's hard sometimes to keep your mind stayed on? How many know some days the devil is busy? How many know the devil is busy? How many know the devil is trying? trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'm trying to tell you, the devil is trying to start with the man of God. Paul wanted Timothy to know that even in this last most personal book that I would write to Timothy, even though it looks like they have me bound, even though it looks like I'm not winning, even though it looks like I ought to be sad, even though it looks like I ought to be crying, it looks like I ought to be focused on other stuff, I still got my mind on pouring my life into you, Timothy, because you got to take this mantle and you got to take it to another level. You got to go higher. Somebody shout higher. Paul sitting behind bars again. He'd been in jail before, y'all know that, right? But jail never stopped him from doing what God has called him to do, his physical situation. So I want to make sure you understand that one of the ways that you need to be able to recognize how to go forward is recognize that there is a calling, somebody shout calling, upon your life. T, one of the things we must always remember, Paul, even where he was suffering in jail, he remembered that I'm here because of my calling. You're going through some stuff today because of your calling. You don't want to go through it, Jackie. Shalanda, you don't want to go through it. My family doesn't want to go through it. I don't want to go through it. But Paul recognized he was in jail. He was physically confined. The devil was on his trail. He was trying to, to destroy a ministry, keep him from preaching the gospel. But he knew he had a calling. Somebody said calling. See, there's a mindset for ministry. There's a mindset. It's not just the physical stuff you do, but unless you're transformed, Romans 12, 1 and 2, by the renewing of your mind, unless you realize that your life is more than about the stuff that you have, it's about the person that called you. Anybody know you've been called? You've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Are there any saved folks in the house? Anybody saved up in here? Anybody know the Lord? Anybody know that if God be for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. Anybody know you got a calling upon your life? 
I'm, I'm, I'm really burdened today, Davis. Because this calling sometimes makes me, cause me to do stuff I just don't want to do. It makes me put up with stuff I just don't want to put up with. It makes me go places I just don't want to go. Listen, he's sitting in a jail cell reminding, listen, I was appointed. I was called to be a preacher. I didn't ask to be a preacher. I was called for this burden. I was sent an apostle. I didn't just win. I didn't just go because I was trying to look good and impress folks. I didn't just go because somebody told me I, I had to go because God sent me. I was appointed. I was called to be a teacher, to pour into the lives of people that sometimes don't want to hear, ain't trying to come to class, ain't trying to study to show themselves, I was called for this. Look at Paul trying to minister to Timothy. He said, Timothy, don't worry about me because I'm all right. Somebody know you're all right today. Anybody know you're all right? Anybody know you're all right? If you don't know it, just tell yourself anyway. Somebody say, I'm all right. Even though it don't look good right now, somebody say, I'm all right. Even though it ain't going your way right, somebody say, I'm all right. You got to say it like you mean Somebody say, I'm all right. Somebody shout, I'm all right. Paul sitting in the jail cell saying, I'm all right, Timothy. Don't worry about it. Paul sitting confined. Listen, even though it looks like the devil has me, I'm right where God wants me to be. It looks like they shut down the ministry. You know how it looks, David. Sometimes it don't look good. Sometimes it ain't going your way. It looks like the devil is winning, but the devil is a liar today. He don't win. The devil is a liar today. The devil is a liar today. You better claim it. You better get the right mindset today. You better get your mind stayed on Jesus. <sighs> Paul. Talking to Timothy Davis after 20 years, I realized not only do I got to make sure that the people's mindset is right, but I definitely got to make sure that my mindset is right because I can be transparent too and I can mess around and say some stuff. It'll cut you to your knees, but at the same time, God will raise you up. And I'm trying to tell you, everybody don't want to hear the truth, but the truth will set you free. I mean, you know the truth will set you free. See, you, you, you're looking at your physical situation. And the mindset that you got to understand is that I am not bound by physically where I'm located, physically how much money I got, physically who I'm kin to, physically what I live, physically where I go, because I know that I am called to do a wonderful work for the master. I mean, oh, you're called to do a great work for the master. If you don't know, I'm telling you right now. Paul told him in Philippians 1, 6, there's a good work. Somebody said good work that God has started in you. And no matter where you are physically, God is still working. God is still working. God is still working. God is You, 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 you got to own this today. You got to ask yourself, how do I go forward? I understand that I was not saved by accident. I was saved by divine providence. I was not, it was not about happenstance that I came to church today. It was not about happenstance that I walked down the aisle once. It was not about happenstance that I gave my life to the Lord. The Lord had a plan. Country boy from Louisiana. God had a plan. <laughs> Mess around with some prejudice, folks, but God had a plan. Uh, somebody tried to put their foot on my neck, uh, but God had a plan. Uh, somebody said you wasn't going to be nobody, but God had a plan. Uh, somebody talked about you, but God has a plan. Uh, somebody's trying to hold you back, uh, but God has a plan. Uh, God has a plan. Uh, so, listen. 
He said, I've been appointed, I've been called to be a preacher, an apostle, a teacher. For this reason, I also suffer these things. You cannot be a, a, a weak Christian. You cannot allow things to distract you and cause you to begin the second guess, the calling that is upon your life. Listen, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. The question is, do you love him uh, not just when things are going well, uh, but do you love him uh, when suffering, uh, when God is using suffering to make you stronger, to make you wiser, to make you better? Do you love him on the good days, but do you love him on the bad days? You can love him when you're up, uh, but can you love him when you're down? Uh, can you praise your way through? Uh, can you praise your way out? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Anyhow, in a how, in a how. C.S. Lewis, this theologian, said there's a weight uh, of glory. And the weight of glory should not just be on the backs of Jesus. There ought to be some Christians who are willing to pick up their cross and follow the Lord. I'm so sick of sometimes feel good Christian. I need some Christian. David needs some Christian that'll walk with the cross, that'll carry their cross. Any cross bearers up in here? Anybody got a cross today? You suffering. I know you're suffering. God knows you're suffering. God ain't made no mistake. He know exactly where you live. He know every hair on your head. I know you're going through. But listen, Romans 8, 18, still Paul talking. Paul said, the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Watch me now. Paul said, I know I'm suffering, but my suffering is going to be for God's glory. I know I'm suffering, but God's going to be edified because when I'm weak, he's strong. Anybody know God's strong in them? How many know God's strong in you? How many know God's strong in you? No, you don't know it. Because when you're suffering... You're too busy looking at the situation instead of looking at the Savior. Can I say it again? When you're suffering, you're too busy looking at the situation instead of looking at the Savior. Paul said in Colossians 3, 2, I will lift, no, he said, David said, I will lift my eyes unto the hills which cometh my help. Anybody know where your help came from? Anybody know where your help come from? Look up if you know where your help come from. Anybody know where your help come from? Paul was trying to get Timothy to understand, boy, you don't even know what you're going to have to go through in order to take this mantle that I've been carrying, and now it finds me in prison. Suffering. Bearing your cross, physical suffering, emotional suffering, relationship suffering, financial suffering, children suffering, kids, school suffering, jobs suffering. Everybody has some suffering. Everybody has a cross to bear. But the weight of glory is going to make sure that you get on your knees in the midst of your suffering. God is trying to, see this is the problem, is suffering will keep you humble before God. Oh, yeah, that's, well, what happens is when things start going well, you start thinking too highly of yourself. When things start going well, you start, old folks, that smelling yourself. You think you all of that in a bag of chips. God said, let me break you so I can make you. Let me humble you so I can lift you up. Let me. 
Listen, I want to change your mindset. I want my friend to understand that when times are hard, God is right there with him. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. I want you to learn how to praise him anyhow. I want you to shout your way through. I want you to say hallelujah anyhow. Anybody say hallelujah anyhow. See, you got this calling, but you ain't got no commitment. Suffering tests your commitment. Suffering tests whether you just want to do it when you can see the benefits in your life or you're going to do it when you can see the benefits for the kingdom of God. I'm so sick and tired of Christians, holy folks, Folks that come up in church every Sunday, and as soon as something happens, oh, they the first ones to either fall out all over the place, oh, you know there's something wrong with them. They shouting today, girl. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, I got to shout every day for the Lord. I got to praise every day for the Lord. I know God is good. I know he's worthy of my praise. Anybody know God is good up in here? So I'm asking you, for your pastor, are you committed? Do you realize you got a calling? But the next question is, are you committed? Paul, again, in the jail cell. Ain't going to get out this time. They're going to martyr him. He knows it. But God... Is still worthy of this suffering that, and so he said, listen, I understand because God has called me to preach and to be an apostle and to teach, I understand why I'm suffering. Because the devil wants to shut me down. You ain't hear me. The devil wants to change your praise into complaining. The devil, instead of Every word coming out of your mouth saying, thank you, Jesus. You saying, oh, hell, why in it? The devil wants you to stop praising God. The devil wants to steal your joy. The devil wants to cause you to stop believing. How many know you walk by faith? Anybody walk by faith? Anybody trying to walk by faith? Anybody know I'm going to walk this thing out? Somebody say, walk it out. Somebody said, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Yeah, I wrote a song about it. Want to hear it? Here it go. Walk it out. 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 No, you ain't trying to walk it out. See, listen. The reason you ain't walking it out, not only are you not committed, but you ain't got no courage. The text says, I'm not ashamed. See, you ain't bold enough to walk with Jesus. You ain't bold enough to walk with Davis. You ain't bold enough to walk with me. Because if you walk with me, you got to tell somebody that God is still good. You got to tell somebody, God will make a way. Won't he make a way? Somebody says, somehow. Somebody says, somehow. You got a calling? Are you committed? But do you have courage? Are you just sometimes, or are you willing to say what God called you to say, even if it don't, everybody don't like it? Well, you're going to say it anyhow, even if it's what somebody else don't want to hear. Paul said to the Romans, 116, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Davis needs you to be bold. Davis needs you to tell somebody, not just on Sunday morning, but he needs you to tell somebody on Monday that God is good. He needs you to tell somebody on terrible Tuesday that God is good. He needs you to tell somebody when you want to be a wimp on Wednesday, you're going to worship him in a house. He needs you to tell somebody when your Thursdays are all kind of crazy, I'm going to still give God praise. He needs you to 
to tell somebody when it's freaky Friday and you want to go out, God is still good. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? No, you don't know he good. Now watch, I'm, I'm going to test you. I can tell how some of y'all worship that you ain't bold enough, you ain't courageous enough. Because see, you, you let people even just in church affect your worship. <laughs> you know how some of y'all worship just looking over next to the side trying to see how somebody's going to react. <laughs> but when you got a problem, when you're suffering, you don't care what somebody else says. I'm going to praise God in it. How? I don't care what you, I don't care how you talk to me. I need some people who are bold, who are courageous. I need somebody who can take 15 seconds to praise God right now. Somebody praise God right now. Praise God. You getting there, you getting there, you getting there, you getting there, you getting there. I'm tired of scary cats. <laughs> I'm tired of people scared of what the devil can do. And God is always proud of promise if God is for me. That's why the ministry can't go full. Because we got scary, scary cat Christians. Davis, 20 years of preaching to the same church. I get so sick and tired of every time when faith is required. I hear we can't do that. Or we ain't never done that. Where is your faith? Turn to your neighbor and say, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Charles Spurgeon said, in his old age, all I want to do is go forward. And in order to go forward, Charles was big on this mindset of people continuing to grow and understand that the more you see God and the more you know God, the more you have confidence in God, you've just got to expand your understanding of God that he's bigger than you, he's bigger than the problem, he's bigger than the situation, he's bigger. So listen, you got a calling, you got to be committed, even in the suffering, you got to be courageous, but you got to be confident in who you are, what God has called you to do, the craziness that you're going through, the commitment. In sports, I'm a sports guy, Davis, we play sports, some other sports people in here. When you lose your confidence, coach might as well sit you on the bench. Watch the analogy. When you lose your confidence in God, God might as well sit you down. Let, let me say, I, I, I want to bless somebody so they can bless Davis. The reason you ain't going nowhere is because you don't have enough confidence in God. So God has set you down until you understand that I am the I am and, and I'm I'm, I'm going to bless somebody today because some of y'all stuck. you in jail. You don't even know you're in jail. You're confined, and you don't even know you're confined because you ain't bold enough to step out on the word of God. I'm... Boy, I, I searched all over. Davis didn't send me a text. I didn't know what to preach, and I was, I, I was laboring. And God said, listen, you've been there. You, you 20 years, you know. And you know that people who say they believe, they really don't believe. Because when the time of testing comes, they can't go forward. They get stuck. They start complaining. They don't have no praise. They don't have no worship. They don't have... Listen, at the end of the text, watch this, watch this. Somebody said it earlier. Watch this. The text says, I am convinced. I, not only have I believed, referring to, I believe God before. 
and I'm believing God now. Anybody want to claim that with me? Someone said, I believe God before, and I'm believing God now. So, so watch this. He said, I am convinced that a God is, he is able, he meaning God, is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Entrusted is a bank term. It's about giving or depositing and trusting that which you deposited will be there and you might even get some interest when you go back. Somebody say amen. Watch me now. I, I, I see. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God is entrusting us with the word of God. But before Paul, and that's actually in verse 14 that we get, didn't get to. But before God can entrust you with the word of God, he said, listen, I, Paul said, I have entrusted to him. Meaning, I have made a deposit or put myself in the hands of God. <laughs> Hear me. Not just has God trusted David, trusted me, but Paul is saying, I am trusting him with my life. Give everything. Give your life to the Lord. Listen, so, so, so watch this. I, I love illustrating. Preacher, come here, 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 come here. You too, preacher, you too. You, you, you too, come here, come here. Watch this. Right there, stand right there. You trust your life to the Lord. And the text says he's able to guard what you have entrusted unto him. So look at the devil walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So look, look at the devil trying to kill, steal, and destroy. But guess what? I have entrusted my Anybody ever had the devil try to attack you? If the devil ever tried to attack you, just stand on your feet for a second. Watch this. I went down to Ellsworth Prison, and, and, and I thought it was, man, you, ain't no way you could get in Ellsworth Prison unless they open the door and let you in because there's walls and bars everywhere. They're trying to make sure that them prisoners can't get out and other things you can't get in. Your life is entrusted to God. You're standing in the midst of suffering. Your life, you're giving your life, your family, your relationship, your finances, your job to God. Can he guard it? No, no, no. Can he guard it? So why you worry? Can he guard it? Why you not worse? Can he guard it? So listen, here's the issue. The devil is walking around but he can't get you. The devil is seeking, but he can't destroy you because I've got the covering of the blood of Jesus. I've got the covering of the blood. You standing because you're suffering, but you're not shouting because you don't realize you're covering. You're not praising because you don't understand what God has kept can't nobody get when he puts it in the hands of God can't nobody mess with you so here is Jesus stretch out your hands fellas stretch out your hands Jesus on the cross hands stretched out wide anybody ever been on your cross hands stretched out. and sometimes you gotta lift your hands unto the Lord because I'm on my cross. Anybody ever lift your hands to the Lord? I'm on my cross. I'm on my cross. The devil thought he had me. I almost died. I laid down temporarily. But early, early, lift your hands early. Praise hands early. God raises you up. Raise me up, Lord. 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 Somebody shout, raise me up, Lord. Raise me up, Lord. Raise me up, Lord. Raise me up, Lord. Raise me. It's Sunday morning. 
If you're going to help my friend. Come on, Davis. Come on. Come on, Jackie. Come here. You can't stand with this man. You can't bless him with your lip service. Thank you for the checks. But he needs a spiritual blessing. He needs people who know they are called, who are committed, who are bold or crazy. I don't need that other stuff, Davis. I don't need that. I know it's hard. Shalana will soon walk away from me some days. I, I know it's hard. I didn't ask to suffer like this. Some days I want to quit. But God won't let me. But the way he blesses me is he brings some Timothys along. He brings some deacons along. He brings some trustees along. He brings some choir members along. He brings some ushers along. And they stand with me. You know I love this man. And I've seen you hurt recently. And I respect you. But he'll hurt by himself and he won't tell nobody. I'm trying to tell you, man, God is with you. God is with you. Even when it looks like you're bound, God is just preparing you so you can prepare them so that you can come along beside him and God can raise up this ministry. How does this ministry go forward? You make sure that you come along beside your pastor. You pray for him. I ain't talking about no super, but get on your knees. And you call on Jesus. And you ask the Lord, save him, save me so I can help him. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And that's the only way he was going to be able to go forward. So when they don't understand, love her, but when she don't understand, when I don't understand, put it in God's hands. Davis. In trying to do what God has called me to do this year has been the hardest year of my life. Not just doctorate, not just trying to do physical stuff, but trying to stay focused on what God called me to do. I felt like I've been bound. But God said, you're not bound. You're just in a temporary holding place where I can get your attention and you can pour out into somebody else. You, you, you felt like you were bound, but God said, when I make you free, you're free indeed. If I make you free, you're free indeed. When I make you free. I deposited my life into the hands of God. And I trusted God, you can keep it until that day, until Jesus comes back, until he rescues me and calls me to heaven. He can keep me. Can't he keep you? Won't he keep you? Anybody know he'll keep you? Anybody glad he'll keep you? Somebody said, keep me, Lord. Somebody said, keep me, Lord. Somebody said, keep me, Lord. Give God some praise if he'll keep you. Praise him if he'll keep you. Praise him if you know he'll keep you. Yeah. 
just like he kept Jesus. My friend, he'll keep you. I'm not a big all. I do believe that I can get a prayer through. I do believe that. Come hold my mic for me, Williams. God. Some days we're suffering. Some days we're going through. Some days our commitment is being tested. Some days, God, we've got to just be bold. But God, more than anything, we've got to commit. We've got to deposit our lives into your hands. God, I pray now that we make a deposit today. We put Pastor Davis and Sister Davis, their kids, their family, their congregation. We put them in your hands right now, Lord. And we know you can guard them. We know you can keep them, Lord. We know that you can preserve them, Lord, for the use that you have called. Build them up, Lord, where Satan is trying to tear them down. I know it's not easy, but you never said that the road would be easy. But you didn't bring us this far, 16 years, to leave them. Bless them, Lord. Make your face smile upon them, Lord. Be gracious to them, Lord. Show them favor, God. Thank you, Lord. We put our friends, we make a deposit into your hands. As you kept Jesus on his cross, keep them on their cross. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give God some praise. If you believe he'll keep you, give God some praise. He's worthy. Give God some praise. Come on, praise him if you know he'll keep you. Won't he do it? Will he, won't he, won't he do it? Will he, won't he, won't he do it? Will he, won't he, won't he do it? Won't he do it? How do we go forward in ministry? Paul reminded Timothy, on his last days, what's it going to take to go forward in ministry? God bless you. As we stand all over the building.